Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this sort of magical glass card. Now this was the first I made and I showed it in another video. But today we're going to be doing one with some butterflies. And the reason for that is that the butterflies are die cuts and they're symmetrical. So it's just going to make it easier on you. <laughs> and this is a super cool card. Uh, not my invention, but I'll give credit in the description box and as we go. So what you're going to need is you're going to need um, you're gonna need some acetate. And this is acetate for if you're going to do reverse stamping, which we won't do today. I did on the koi. You're going to need two um, frame dies, any ones you like. You're gonna need some pretty heavy duty clear acetate. These I got from Simon Says Stamps. Um, it's pretty heavy and you want don't wanna use not used acetate. You want a nice clean one. You're gonna need a couple of pieces of cardstock, your color of choice. Today we're using black and this is 110 pound. Uh, I forget the brand, I got it on Amazon. And what this is, is these are wrap, wrapping papers. And I just love the little patterns on them, but some of the patterns are just too big. So I'm gonna look through here and find a pattern that's suitable for a card size. That one's pretty huge. Um, we'll check and see. I mean, they're all fairly big, but uh, this is a 17, I think 17 by 24 inch wrapping paper. Um, and I just love this wrapping paper. That one's pretty. We'll think about that one. Yeah, I think this one here. It's got a small enough pattern to not get lost in the whole thing. I do like the circles, but, um, and I love that one, but they're just, the pattern is just too big for a card. That would be a center piece by itself. Anyway, the um, method I learned from Sam Calcutt, um, UK, she, um, she does one that's in a slimline form and she puts little feet on it. Um, well, y'all know me, I'm not the craziest person about slimline cards. And so I wanted to adapt this to, you know, a typical size card that most of us make, which would be the four and a quarter by five and a half. So the first thing I have to do is I have to decoupage this paper onto my card. And I'm going to be using multimedia mat. If you have something else that's similar, um, go for it. But I like this because it dries mat, and um, you know I want want my paper to you know match. And I'm going to be using these butterfly dies from Tim Holtz, and I have the dies and the stamps. So what I have to do now is I have to get my trimmer out and trim my paper down. And I'm going to actually need an extra piece of cardstock as well because I need to make a hinge. Um, but I will cut these down to A2 size, which is, um, I'll cut them in half at, at five and a half. And there's two of them. You see how that piece right there is dog-eared? It just bugs me. Um, so I'm going to trim that off, make sure I trim off the dog-eared side. <laughs> I'll make up my mind here one of these days. I'm going to take that dog-eared part and I'm going to use it for my hinge. And then I'll, and this is why I'm cutting two pieces of paper because um, uh, every one of these papers got damaged in shipping. And they all have that little dog ear on them, so I can't use the whole piece uh, for a card. So I'll just take the good parts of both of those, and I'm going to keep that other black piece because I'm going to need it later. So we're fine with keeping those scraps. We're going to use those to cut out our frames. So I've got my cards. I'm just going to get my little, um, little scoring tool, and I'm going to score these all. You're gonna score that one inch piece, so that's one by five and a, I mean one, yeah, one by uh, five and a quarter. So I'm gonna score these each at four and a quarter. Go 
go ahead and fold them over. And if you're like me and you don't do a great, great fold, for whatever reason, I can never get them straight, um, do trim off that excess because you need it to sit properly. So I'm going to score this one at four and a quarter as well. And then I'm going to score this one, this one inch, one by five and a half at a half inch. And that's going to be my hinge. Put away my little scoreboard here. Y'all, I am trying everything I can think of to try and get rid of that glare because it, if it bothers you, you can imagine it bothers me. I end up with a migraine half the time from the glare of the light. <laughs> but I need enough light, so I don't know. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just um, burnish these down with my bone folder. There we go. And um, <clears throat> I need to trim my paper. Now this is folded in fourths. And you need four or five pieces. It just depends on how much you want to cover. Um, and you don't have to cover any at all. I just thought this was kind of fun. I mean, wrapping paper is really thin. And so I gotta turn down my computer there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trim these down to the size I need. And I am going to make them a little bit more than four and a quarter and a little bit more than, I mean, a little bit more than four and a little bit more than five and a quarter. And it's so thin, I can cut all four pieces at one time. And you can see that it doesn't fold up evenly there on the end, so I'm just going to trim that little end piece off so it's nice and even. And I'm using my Big Mama swing line here. So I'm doing it about four and an eighth. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> I did this, I made this video. Yeah, that's what happened. I wanted to make it, I didn't make it. Um, yeah, I did about an eighth inch under five and a half. And then I'll do an eighth inch under four and a quarter. So that's math me, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, gosh, you guys. Now this this wants to fight me. The only thing about really thin paper is the the blade is so heavy that um, it wants to fight you. So I'm going to get out my smaller trimmer now that I have it cut to a manageable size. Make sure it's nice and even on that end. Flip it over. And again, we're doing just a little over four. About halfway between the um, grid marks. So I've got my wrapping paper cut. I mean, y'all, there are some beautiful wrapping paper out there. Now, this stuff was not cheap. I can tell you that much. Um, <clears throat> but I found some at the dollar store that I thought was really awesome. It's a matter of how you apply it because you can't really apply glue to them unless you brush it on. Um, you have to... You have to, you know, decoupage them, sort of, and the multimedia mat's awesome for that. So I'm just kind of arranging these around in the way that I want to add them to the card. And I do end up adding a fifth piece. But in the first, in the Koi card, there's only four pieces, I think. Maybe even just three. I don't know. I forgot. So I'm going to take my card... And I'm going to trim off that excess because, again, I want everything to sit nicely um, because it's, you know, it's a card that you're going to stand up opened. And so I'm just going to kind of get that little extra little piece off of there that kind of hangs over when you fold it. It's kind of hard to see on black paper, too, that you can you can barely see the overhang unless you're right there with it. But I'm happy with that. So I'm going to 
go ahead and kind of clean up my mess here a little bit. I'm gonna get out my multimedia mat and I've got my little Tim Holtz Distress brush here. I'm gonna open this card out and I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of mint tape and mask off the back piece. I don't know what the heck I just, I must have spit on it, I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, I can't, I can't, I have to voice over these things because of the way my household is. <laughs> so I keep the, I keep a little bit of that press and seal over the top of that uh, multimedia mat. And I'm just going to paint it on in a nice even coat, but you have to work quickly because this stuff dries really fast <laughs> like really fast and my very front one I end up getting it too dry because I didn't place it properly so I'm going to carefully try and place it on here and make sure it's even on the bottom right and see it won't move for me I've got it placed wrong so I've got to lift it up carefully Lay it back down. Okay, there was a bubble in there was the thing. And because I lifted it up, you see that corner is coming up. So when I'm just going to take my rag and I'm going to just run it over the entire thing. I'm going to have to add a little bit more of this multimedia mat because it dried on me. I'm just going to take my rag and smooth it down. And that gets ensures that there aren't any bubbles in it and it gets it good and stuck down and gets off any excess glue. But this stuff dries completely clear, so, or, you know, and matte, so it's not, doesn't come up into a shiny mess. Just gonna wipe off the area there and I'm gonna go ahead and get the inside now. And I'm just gonna have to be happy with the way it is. Or, I can choose to make that the inside. No, I think I'll leave it. Okay, so another side, same thing. Just get that decoupage medium down. And I'm not worrying about it spilling over to the edge of the card or anything because it just simply is not gonna show. And it's gonna add a little bit of strength there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my piece down carefully making sure that I get it nice and straight because it's going to dry in a second and then I'm just going to do the same just wipe it down with my rag so this video I'm doing in two parts because it was so long um it this is a long process I'm not gonna lie um but you know some people are just worth it I'm just making sure that I don't have any goobers on there. The um, wrapping paper has a little bit of a shiny sort of surface. Um, satiny, I don't know. It's not um, normal paper. So I'm gonna do this page as well and then I'll have half of it done. Hopefully I don't tear my wrapping paper with that tape. Mint tape's pretty good. It doesn't really stick to paper and tear it very often. Oops. Ah. Luckily, I got that one nice and wet, so it's going to lay down for me. And I'm not terribly concerned about what's happening in the inside portion of that because I'm going to be cutting that away. Okay, so I've got that portion. Now let's do the other one. And I'm just doing the insides of this one. See, I needed an extra piece. <laughs> Need five pieces if you want to, um, if you want to do the front cover with it as well. There we go. Just get that trimmed down. So 
same procedure. So if you um, if you don't have symmetrical dies, you just and and um, symmetrical stamps, you can do reverse stamping. And there's a lot of videos, but basically the way I understand it, and the way I did it with the koi, was I um, put the acetate in my stamping platform, and I stamped it with Versafine Clair in the Nocturne, and then picked it up and laid it onto a piece of paper and rubbed it down. And it works fairly well. I, if you have a better idea, please let me know in the comments below because um, really they, they were just so faint compared to the original stamped ones. And that those I did, by the way, with um, the Koi stamp set from Local King Rubber Stamps. I love that set. It's one of my favorites. Anything Asian, I'm on it. <laughs> All right. Not bad, not bad. Maybe not perfect, but pretty darn close. Good enough for me. So I'm just going to get those nice and rubbed down because that, again, is going to be basically a border piece. I'm going to put away my multimedia mat. Don't need that. And I'm go wash my brush. Okay, I've got my pieces. It's nice and dry. Now, sometimes, you know, when you're using a wet medium like that, the card will get kind of warpy. Um, so you just have to mess with it and straighten it out. But um, meanwhile, I'm going to be cutting out the windows now, or the holes for the windows, apertures, as it were. And I'm going to go ahead and... I don't know what, okay. So just make sure that it's, you know, even. I'm just, I'm eyeballing it. I'm not going to measure. I just want to make sure that it's even all the way around. Oh, yeah, I was making sure I had, I was working with the right piece, working on the right side. I mean, it wouldn't, all wouldn't be lost. I could cover another piece with the, I could cover the whole thing with the wrapping paper. But might as well just check on it, make sure that you're using the, doing the right piece. I'm going to put the tape on the inside so that it doesn't accidentally rip the wrapping paper. Even though I know it won't, stuff happens. So I'm just uh, cutting this out in my Vagabond 2. And I've got it kind of tilted off the side. And yeah, I can't get that in camera. It's way too huge and it's over there. So... <laughs> We'll just go ahead and get that piece cut out. And I am going back and forth with it um, just to make sure that this die cuts through because it's been my experience with this die. It doesn't always like to cut through two pieces of paper, but it did fine. So I'm just going to lift that out. I'm going to save this other piece because it's still a cool piece and it's probably going to go on the front. Uh-huh. Or back or on another project, whatever. See, I'm gonna just carefully peel my tape away. And so that's my front piece. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay it on top here for a second to kind of get placement of my other, my uh, cutting of my next window. And so I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil and it turns out the pencil's kind of hard to see, but you can see it. Um, so that I get the get my frames nice and even. So I'm just gonna kind of match it up with the lines that I drew. Yeah, that's that's wrong. No, no, no. Scoot it over. There you go. Like I said, they're kind of hard to see. And I'll go ahead and cut this one out as well. So, um, yeah, I recently got a thousand subscribers. I was so excited. I really do thank everyone for, you know, coming to my channel and watching my videos and giving me your thumbs up and commenting. I just really appreciate all of you. And I, I am having so much fun doing this. I never expected that I would be doing this, but here I am. So... <laughs> And I get lots of support, and uh, particularly from the Foiling Snobs Club and Nancy Stamps. Um, 
you know, those guys have promoted my channel like crazy, and I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so I've got my two parts. Now I just need to get my hinge on here. In hindsight, the way I glued the hinge on, it doesn't really matter because it'll, you know, bends either way. But what I want to do is I want to get half of it in the one half of the hinge right there. So I'm just going to put glue on that one half. Being kind of careful not to get it right smack in the middle of the um, paper. Careful as I can be. I'm just going to lay this in here and I'm going to butt it up against the edge of the paper there. Make sure that it's nice and even. Now Sam does hers. She cuts her card longer or something so that she's just got, you know, basic extra part of a fold. But um, I can't cut my card any longer because that's how long <laughs> my card is. <laughs> it's just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully burnish that down to make sure it's nice and stuck. And then I'm going to flip it. Again, checking to make sure I'm doing the correct sides. Um, luckily with this pattern, there's no upside down. <laughs> if there was, well, this would be a longer video. So I'm just using my reptile adhesive that I have in this little, it's actually an alcohol ink bottle. And I'm matching up the end, edges here, leaving just a tiny bit of space because it does have to fold. So basically leaving the space of the of the score mark, which is why I said I probably should have glued it from the other side where I could see the score mark better. But we can live with this. I'm just going to give it a fold. And I'm going to fold it all together. Okay, so we've got the basics down here. Now we just need to work on our acetate. So what I'm going to do here, I'm looking for something. There we go. I'm looking for my acetate. I'm going to measure the inside of this, and I need it to be a little bit bigger than the inside. Or the, even I need it to be a little bit bigger than the outside. So it looks to be about four and three fours by eh, three and a half. I'm going to cut two. And um, like I said, this this is nice and thick, thick acetate. And also it's um, brand new. So if you're gonna make this card, I'm gonna ask you to please not use recycled acetate because it's gonna have scratches and stuff on it. I mean, if you have, a, if, if you're, you know, a really careful person and you keep all your acetate scraps pristine then by all means but that would not be me <laughs> you know I'll just throw them here and there so I like to use a new piece and I'm just looking at the size here for a second and sorry about the glare you know, get me a gold piece of paper and I'm really in trouble so cutting these down and I just need two of them I mean, you could do four, um, but that would, it might look weird. Yeah, I, I don't think I would, um, you know, for strength purposes. But as I said, this is really strong acetate, so I'm happy with it. So I'm just writing down the measurements here for you. Four and three-fourths by three and three-fourths. And does it fit in the window? It fits in the window, barely but good enough because it's gonna go, um, it's gonna go inside the frames. So we're gonna make the frames now. So what I do is I grab my mint tape and I get these as even as I possibly can on all sides. And then I tape it down in a couple of places because I need to cut more than one and I need them to be, you know, pretty much identical. So I tape them down just to be 100% sure that they don't come apart on me and that they stay the same for both pieces. And I'm looking for that black scraps that we had. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these 
lay these on and cut them out. And I need just two. You could do four. You could do some on the back, too, if you wanted to. And because I'm going to run this back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and tape it down in another spot so it doesn't move on me and make those funny little fuzzies on the cuts. And so here's the first one. And see, it even I thought it didn't cut, but it did. And, of course, I'm going to save that piece because... You know, that's going to be handy maybe for this card, maybe for another one. Um, it, you know, it'll fit as a matting layer or whatever. I'm just a firm, firm believer in keeping those things. And I, I have tons of them and tons of circles. And even if I have to just use it for die cutting, well, why not? And I do have this sped up here because, I mean, this part's pretty fundamental. You guys have done this before. So now I've got my two frames, and I've got some, uh, looks like that's about quarter inch tape. And I usually pull off the first piece because it doesn't feel as sticky to me because it's kind of hanging. And I'm just going to lay tape on all four sides, and I've done some of that off camera. And I'll burnish the tape down, make sure it's down there nice and tight. Being careful not to crinkle my frame. This is 110 pound cardstock, so it's not going to crinkle that easily. And then I'm just going to take my little pokey tool and lift off the backing of the tape and I'm going to tape on the acetate on both of them. And I'll just show doing one because obviously you don't need to see me do it twice. And this stuff is sticky. Um, I want to say it's scrapbook.com. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know, I have a ton of it, ton of it. So, and I've bought it from various places, you know, different sizes. I grab my acetate and I'm gonna make sure that it's going to hit that tape 100%. And it doesn't matter if there's excess tape on the edge because we're gonna be putting more tape on top of it anyway. There we go, happy with that. And see, we'll put more tape on. Same method, just, it just needs to be thinner than the frame itself. And I like this tape because it can tear. And that red tape makes me crazy because I have to cut it. And I really hate doing that. I'm so lazy. I'm a lazy crafter. It just takes too long, that's all. I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, I want to get done, I want to get done, and move on to the next cool project. But this one, oh my gosh, I just love this method. It's so cool. I'm going to carefully burnish these down because I don't want to scratch my acetate. I'm going to pull my card over and take my pokey from the outside so I don't scratch my acetate, pull the tape off. I'm gonna fight it here. It looks like I'm gonna have to go from the inside. It's a little tricky sometimes to get this stuff off. <laughs> now you can do it, but yeah, for me, I think it's my eyesight. I just don't see very well. It doesn't matter if I get new glasses the next week. I can't see very well again. I think. <laughs> I think my eyes are just trying to fail me. So I'm gonna lay this down kind of flat and I'm gonna try and lay this on here as evenly as I possibly can. There we go. So there we've got our first window frame in. Still folds nice. Now I need to get the second frame in. And um, I did that off camera and I've got my frames in. Now I do like to take a clean, soft rag and I, I've got the Viva paper towels. They're really soft. And make sure that there's no fingerprints or anything on that acetate. So I'm just gonna wipe that down. And when we come back for part two, we're gonna go ahead and do our embellishments on the inside.
And as I said, you can put frames on the back side too if you want to. But that's it for this part. Um, I appreciate you watching if you like this video. Oh, hey, see? See what we can do? So I think I will just do that. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.